have another fun new technique to share today. Well, it's not really new, and I didn't think it up. It's somebody else's. But it's one that I really haven't been able to find much information about or any instructions for. So I've kind of had to wing it. Um, I will put the inspiration video link down in the um, description area. And the, see, the problem is the, the video, the only video I've seen, and someone else, and I can't remember exactly who now, someone else told me about this. And the video is like a promo for this girl's, either her DVD or her book or her class or something you have to buy. And um, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to buy it, of course. Right now I can't. So I've kind of been trying to figure out um, a way to make it work. This is not the technique, by the way. <laughs> I was trying to use the technique in a practical application and I kind of failed, but this was the result, which I thought was kind of nice. So, I thought I would just show you the journal page. I did not film the process because it was a it was a trial thing, you know, I was trying to figure out how to make this technique work, and I had no idea what I was doing or where I was going, and I was really surprised when it ended up being a journal page. So here we go. This is, I'm going to show you the background, that's the technique part of it. And all I did was collage a bunch of stuff on it. These um, uh, bingo sheets, um, and then these little black things. They are last year's Easter eggs, which did not survive the move. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, kind of tragic. I had just used a paint pen. To, to doodle on some eggs. No big deal. You know, I can remake them easy. Um, but I did try to keep them so that I wouldn't have to remake them and, and they didn't survive the move. They were in a little egg carton and everything, but, you know, oh well. So, I just kind of, you know, did the crush them up thing and glued them on like this. I used perfect paper adhesive because it was just sitting out right there, but any kind of white glue, Mod Podge type thing will work. You have to kind of put it on kind of thick put these in there and then just leave it alone. I let mine dry overnight so that all that thick glue would dry and now they're on there good. They're not coming off. So I did that and then just a little while ago I decided they needed a little something something. So I just put some clear glitter glue on the white dots. And this is of course the um, cheap Chinese baby wipe that I used when I was coloring the background, which I colored with water-soluble oil pastels. And I used the baby wipe to kind of move them around and soak up some extra water, and it got colored real pretty. So I used my heat gun to kind of melt it and shrink it. And then I decided that, um, you know, I like the contrast of the bold black and white, almost geometric look with the painty mixed media thing. So, I stamped the butterfly. I still don't know why I stamped it on vellum. I'm only, I assume it's because the vellum was there staring at me. I just There was a piece of vellum laying out. So, I stamped it embossed with black embossing powder on the vellum, knowing all along that I wanted it to be black and white. Now, why I didn't stamp it on white paper so that I could just color the black areas, I will never know. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it on stupid vellum, <laughs> which means I had to color not only the black, but the white. <laughs> uh, using cereal bags. Now, I've gone through, I've run the gambit on trying to figure out the best way to do it, you know, what looks best. This was water-soluble oil pastels. It was okay, not ideal. This one was water-soluble oil pastels, and it, you put them on, and then they, the heat from the iron kind of melts them, and they do weird things, which is kind of cool, but, you know, I'm not really fusing anything, just the, the cereal bag to itself, which you can pull apart. Um, yeah, you can pull apart, but it takes some effort. They, they fuse fairly well. Uh, let's see. This was some um, stuff in the middle and on top, 
which looks very cool, but um, it did not fuse well. I learned a lot during this process. Yeah. This was some of those uh, baby wipes, the, the melty baby wipes that I fused, but um, something happened and it stuck to the paper <laughs> when I was ironing it. So, okay, I tried. <laughs> this one is the one I ended up liking. This is uh, scraps, which I have an abundance of, fused between two layers of cereal bag. When I say cereal bag, I'm talking about the inner liner that comes in a box of cereal. You know, once you finish your cereal, you wash and dry that liner and um, sandwich stuff in between it. That's what all we're doing. And I ended up really liking this. And I have used two different things. This, well, both of these may be cereal bags. I'm not sure, but you have several options. Um, it doesn't have to be specifically cereal. Anything with that kind of a plastic, waxy inner liner bag will work. There's a lot of um, crackers and snacks that have them. Also, if you get magazines in the mail, some of them come wrapped in the plastic like this. We get National Geographic. It has this little plastic sleeve on it every time. This works really good, too. That's like crackers. This is just an extra heavy. I don't even remember what it was from. I'm not sure how that one's going to work. The rest of these are just generic cereal. Let's just pull one out to use. I've been collecting them for a while, trying to figure out the best way to get this to work. and It just took me a while. Okay. For this technique, you are going to need something to iron on. This is a piece of that um, uh, heat proof stuff that is in between the layers of the fabric on an ironing board cover. And if you want to make your own ironing board cover, you can buy this. I wish I knew what it was called. That would be helpful. But it's completely heat proof. This, you want your iron set on high, on hot, all the way and this won't hurt it. You can iron on it all day long. So you want that. You want a... I put a piece of protective paper down and then you're going to want something non-stick. This is some sticker release paper off of a sheet of stickers. So I'm going to put that down here. <clears throat> you can use uh, parchment paper. Wax paper, deli paper don't really work. I've had problems with both of those sticking. Parchment paper works well. Sticker release paper, your silicone sheets, heat proof silicone sheets, those will work. You want a cereal bag and cut it to whatever size you want to use. Let's do, I think it'll be easier to demonstrate a smaller one. So. You need two pieces, a top layer and a bottom layer. Okay, then you're going to need some scraps. Uh, you put your bottom layer on top of your nonstick sheet, and then you grab your scrap that looks something like that, I'm sure. And you start layering them on there. And I like to put some of them, you know, what I consider to be right side up, upside down. I alternate them, put some, some with the pretty side up, some with the pretty side down. That way I have a choice of which side to use. It's, it's double sided when you do that. I've got tons of these from cutting out those paper flowers that I like to compulsively cut out. So this is a good way to use these up because they're such a weird shape that they're um, they're just not right for every purpose. And then some strips. Some of these are from Happy Mail. Y'all may recognize them. I use your stuff. 
and I pulled out some uh, candy wrapper, some foil, because I thought it would look cute, and then I put them back. Why did I do that? Okay. Just like that. Okay. I think that's enough. You want to leave some open space. You don't want to cover the whole thing because the uh, cereal bag likes to stick to another cereal bag, but not so much to paper. It will kind of sort of stick to paper, but then it will start to peel and make you angry. Ask me how I know. All right. Now, you want to put another nonstick thing on top, and then I'm going to get another piece of paper to protect it because there's a blooper reel at the end <laughs> where I just kind of did everything wrong and I'm going to try to avoid repeating that. So you want it hot enough to fuse but not so hot that it just completely melts the paper which is possible. That looks pretty good, really. I think it's, yeah, it's a little loose up here. Ooh, much better. Oh, get back in there. Clearly, it's a little loose down there. I think it's a little loose all over. Let's just give it... No, that's wrong. Jeez Louise, it's one of those days. Okay. And you kind of have to just experiment and know your iron and, and you know, you'll, you'll figure out what is fused enough and what is... Oh my gosh, it's melting through. I really can't tell you what temperature to use and how long to use it because it varies greatly depending on your iron. So that is how you fuse a cereal bag with some scraps. And you know you can do the same thing with the magazine bags. Just you know try whatever kind of plastic liner things come into your house. From here, okay I'll tell you what I did where I went wrong. Over here. Where'd I put it? Okay. This is ideally you want to put it over a colorful background so that it shows through, right? You know, it can look really cool. You can see images through it, text. So you really want to put it on a um, some kind of a fun uh, already done background so that you can see through it. I think a book page would be cool or just a collage of book pages with a little bit of color maybe watercolor on it and then put this on top and then color more over it to glue it down on this one. If I remember right I think I used Mod Podge and then I wished I had used something else. It is not easy to glue down. It's a slick plastic you know, um, I think I'm going to try, I'll do a, a follow-up video to this where I actually use this, and so that's why I'm just kind of talking it out, but I may try something thicker like a tacky glue and see if that helps. Um, and the Mod Podge was fine, it worked, it just took forever in the day to dry, and I was really afraid that it wasn't going to dry completely clear, because I wanted it completely clear. On one of them, I used a clear gel glue, which worked. But, you know, it was the same situation. It took forever to dry. So, that is the technique du jour. So, let's all start playing with this. I love it when I show you something and then I just start seeing video after video after video of everybody trying it out. And because and, y'all always come up with something different and new that I never even thought of. <laughs> always. 
I love, love, love it when that happens. So, you know, grab you some cereal or a box of crackers or a magazine or whatever. Get you some plastic. And I know you've got some scraps to put in there. Iron those suckers together. And then let's see what you can do with it. I'll, I'll work on mine and I'll film my process and then you film yours and then we'll all live happily ever after. The end. So now all you want to do is put your second non-sticky sheet on top, non-sticky side to the... You want to put your plastic on first. What did I do with the other piece? Okay. It's clear. It disappears. Is it underneath there? No. I did cut it, didn't I? Fairly sure I did. Here it is. You put your second piece down and then you watch everything shift and make you angry. Don't worry about it. Now put this one down and then iron. Oh, I'm going to have to move it because I forgot to pull my, my irony thing out. Good. Even the non-stick things will stick, so peel it off quickly. This is not going according to my plan. There we go. I can heat that up with my heat gun and peel it back off. No biggie. Okay. I'm pretty sure I used the same paper last time. That's oh. <laughs> Dead gummit. I think it's fair to say we need to start over. What did I do wrong? Oh, I think I had a that's what it was. I had a big piece of paper under there. See, so this is what I get for figuring something out and then waiting a month before I show you. I totally forget what to do.